Today on Locked on Blue Jackets, we're going to be talking about uh, one of the more controversial prospects, I think, of the Blue Jackets organization. Uh, we're going to talk about Liam Foody. Should he get a new contract? What went wrong with his development? And uh, where do we go from here? That's all coming up today on Locked on Blue Jackets. Locked on Blue Jackets, your daily podcast on the Columbus Blue Jackets. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked On Blue Jackets. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I am, as always, your host, Jay Foster, here to bring you, well, normally I would bring you news and stories and trials and tribulations and whatnot, but uh, today we're going to be just continuing our season in review. We're going to be talking about another guy who spent a bunch of time in Cleveland this season, not a lot of time in Columbus, but because he played a game in a Blue Jackets jersey, we're going to be talking about him. Before we get started, I want to thank everyone for making this your first listen or your first watch of the day. Locked on Blue Jackets is free and available on all podcast platforms and also over on YouTube. So uh, wherever you want to get your fix of Blue Jackets information, you can find us there. And you're never going to have to go behind a paywall for a locked on product. So make sure you are hitting subscribe, you are leaving reviews, you are rating us five stars, etc, etc. But uh, let's talk... Let's talk about Liam Foody, because he was another player, I think, that a lot of people were like, oh, yeah, he's going to be on the team this year. He's going to take a step forward in his development. Uh, he's one of the guys that last se- at the uh, in the last offseason, I talked to Jeff Svoboda, Jackets Insider, and we talked a little bit about some of the guys that are currently, you know, on that bubble line of prospects. You know, we talked about Emil Bemstrom, we talked about Alexander Texier, we talked about Liam Foody. Some of these guys are going to have to take steps forward in their development. And I think right up until his injury, Alexander Texier was doing this. Someone who didn't do this, I don't think, was Liam Foody. Um, and I'm not 100% sure that's entirely his fault, but uh, we do need to kind of talk about what happened this season with Liam Foody. Uh, he was one of the last cuts on uh, the roster for training camp. He would go on to play one game for the Blue Jackets this season. Uh, Zero points, zero penalty minutes, zero of anything. He was a minus one on that game. And that was his only, that was his only Blue Jackets game this season, which is not super, super promising. Um, You know, for a guy that I remember watching in the bubble, so this would have been right around when I started doing Locked on Blue Jacket. I remember watching this guy and being like, man, look at how he plays against Toronto. Look at how he's playing in these playoffs. He's going to be so good when he's a a full-time NHL player. And he just hasn't really really got into that yet. I do want to say, you know, he was a 2018 draft pick, I believe. Yeah, first round uh, 2018 draft pick. He's only 22. So, you know, we're not writing him off yet, but he was a guy that I was expecting more out of this season than we got. I do also want to say he was injured for uh, a pretty large part of the season. He only ended up playing 29 AHL games. Uh, he got shut down. I think I think he was he was on the COVID list for a long while, and then he got shut down uh, about a month and a half before the end of the season because of injury. So he didn't play a ton even when he was in the AHL. So I don't necessarily think it's entirely his fault that he didn't get a ton of NHL time. But on a season where, you know, you've got guys like Justin Danforth, for example, taking advantage of guys in the NHL being injured and then playing so well that even when they come back, you're like, well, I guess we've got to keep playing him. Um it was it was a huge opportunity for a guy like Liam Foody to step up and to say, "Look, I'm I'm ready to ready to be a permanent NHL player." Uh, he split last season between the Blue Jackets and the Monsters as well. Uh, he only had four four assists in 24 games last season with the Blue Jackets. He had 16 points in 12 games with the Monsters. So you know, there's something. The, the, there's potential there, I think, um, but I want to talk about kind of his 
AHL season specifically, because I do think there are some kind of bright spots in that. Uh, and that's what we're going to kind of talk about in just a minute. But first, I want to tell you about a sponsor that I use literally every day. I started taking AG1 because I just felt really kind of blah all the time. I didn't feel great. I wanted better gut health. I wanted more energy. I really hate taking like pills and a million different vitamins. And honestly, I kind of wanted to see what the hype was about. Now I've been taking AG1 for a couple of months and I really love it. It's made me feel so much better in myself. AG1 is 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food sourced superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. They support gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, aging, just anything that you kind of want to improve about your day-to-day routine, then Athletic Greens can do that for you. It is lifestyle friendly, whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, or gluten-free. It costs you less than $3 a day, so you're investing in your health, and it's cheaper than your cold brew habit. And it's just super, super easy. You don't have to take a million different vitamins. You don't have to, you know, find the best multivitamin. You can just take Athletic Greens. It's super easy. All you have to do is put one scoop in a cup of water every day. That is it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. And to make it even easier, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL network. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash NHL network. Take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. So let's talk about Liam Foodie with Monsters, because, again, I feel like I didn't, from from what I watched of the Monsters this season, and I didn't watch the entire season, I watched, you know, a handful. Um, it's it's tough to, to look at Liam Foodie's season and say this was a success in kind of any concrete way, honestly. Um, between the injury, between, you know, not getting the time in the NHL that he should have done. But I think, honestly, even when I was watching him play with the Monsters, it uh, it's, it's tough to look at his game with the Monsters and be like, this is a guy that deserves to be in the NHL. Um, I think there's, it's weird, there's kind of a disconnect between the AHL and the NHL. And I think a lot of people are like, well, if he should be dominating in the a- in the AHL, if he wants to play in the NHL. And sometimes that's not really the case. Sometimes guys only play okay in the AHL and then they go to the NHL and then just, you know, completely explode. However, despite the fact that Liam Foody is, I think, probably one of our more highly touted prospects, in my opinion, um, he came very, very highly... Not recommended, that's the wrong word, but a lot of people were super excited about him, especially, again, after that playoff bubble series. And then for him to kind of turn up, play 29 games in the NHL this season, get 19 points, um, is kind of a a, a letdown or a a disappointment. I don't mean that he's a disappointment, I just think that the situation is a disappointment. You know, it's kind of, we're talking about Kevin Stenland all over again. I wanted more from him, but at the same time, The Monsters were truly brutal this season, and I think it's tough to look at anyone on that team and be like, yeah, they had a they had a great season, apart from, you know, Jay Christensen, who led the team in scoring as defenseman. Um, you know, I would argue that Brendan Gorns had a great season with the Monsters. I don't know that anyone else could be considered as having a great season. I think players had good seasons, and you know, we're gonna talk about a handful of those players later on in this, you know, series of reviews. But but Liam Foodie is uh kind of a, an interesting case because even when you watch him and I guess this is kind of the point the point that I've been ra- ramping up to he has he had flashes in the AHL where he would have the puck and he would go end to end and score a fantastic highlight reel goal on you'd be like yes that's the Liam Foody that we want to see in the NHL and then you'd have some games and he would just look invisible and I don't know if that is because of injury or because of you know he was out with COVID for a little while or just again the fact that the team was generally not very good this year like there's a bunch of different reasons or potential reasons for it but I think the crux of the the matter is Liam Foody did not 
really come across as a player that was playing like he wanted to be in the NHL, which maybe is unfair to Foodie a little bit. But if I'm, you know, Brad Larson and I'm looking at the monsters and I'm looking at who we're going to call up to replace injured players, you know, I'm looking at a guy like Trey Fix Wolanski, for example, who made his NHL debut this season. Uh, I thought looked really good in the handful of NHL games he played. I'm a big, big Trey Fix Wolanski fan. For long-time listeners will know this. He plays every single shift like he's looking for a call-up. And Liam Foodie, I think the best, the best word, I think, is inconsistency. Honestly, I think we need consistency from Liam Foodie. Um, which is kind of what we're going to talk about in, in just a minute. We're going to look at what Liam Foody needs to do next season to not necessarily be better, but to get the most out of his opportunity. Um, so we're going to we're going to take a look at that in a minute. But first, I want to tell you about Bet Online because they continue to be the number one source for all your betting needs and sports. Next season and NFL futures. I know a locked on colleague won big last night betting on the Edmonton Oilers to win the series and Connor McDavid to score a goal. And honestly, that seems like it would have been a gimme. Like that seems like a pretty safe bet. And Bet Online is your continued source for all your sporting wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Once again, that is betonline.net. Because bet online is where the game starts. So uh, Liam Foodie has uh, an interesting summer ahead of him. I think he is an unrestricted free agent, so he potentially might not even be here next season. I think that's highly unlikely. I think it would be um, a, a bad move for. Kekalainen to not at least give him a qualifying offer. Um, I don't know that he's uh, eligible for qualifying offers. Let's uh, let's pull up Cat Friendly and look at Liam Foody for a second. Um, but the fact of the matter is he's a new contract. And after this season, it's uh, it'll be an interesting one. I, uh, I don't know. I don't know what it's... Uh, what it's going to look like. Um, he's coming off of his entry level, I believe. So it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. I uh, I don't I genuinely don't know what's gonna happen. He's probably not gonna make all that much more this season. If I'm Kekalainen, honestly. I signed Foodie to, I don't know, uh, basically the same deal he's on at the minute, maybe a little bit more, maybe, you know, a million or just under or just above, and say, this is your show me year. You get one year and we'll reevaluate next summer. I can't see him signing. I mean, I could see him signing maybe a two-year deal. I cannot at this point in time see them signing Liam Foodie to any kind of substantial or significant contract. However, I do see them re-signing him. He's one of those guys with uh, the... He's one of the restricted free agents. The Blue Jackets have a handful of them. We talked about this a little bit yesterday. Uh, they have to re-sign... Uh, or the guys that need new contracts. Uh, Josh Dunn, Trey fix Liam Foody, Kevin Stanland, and uh, who else? Nick Blankenberg needs a new contract. Adam Boquist needs a new contract. Mill Bemstrom needs a new contract. Carson Meyer needs a new contract. Brent Gaunt needs a new contract. Uh, every one of those guys is an RFA, apart from Brendan Gaunt, who is a UFA because he's uh, 28 and therefore old enough to be a UFA. But my point is, there are a lot of contracts that need doing this offseason. Uh, if I'm Kekalainen, I'd like to think that Foodie is probably a mid tier priority after, you know, obviously. The guys that are going to get re-signed. We've got Line A, we've got Jack Rosovic, uh, we've got Adam Boquist is going to get re-signed. Uh, I assume Gabriel Carson will get a contract. Uh, Nick Blankenberg is kind of an interesting one because he's 
got some weird eligibility rules. I believe he can only sign with the Blue Jackets unless they trade his rights. So I would imagine he'll be back. But, you know, in terms of guys they need to re-sign, Patrick Lyonet has to be at the top of that list, in my opinion. Um, Jack Rosovic is in that second tier. Uh, Daniil Tarasov is also in that second tier, in my opinion. And then after that, honestly, I think you have to start looking at guys like Liam Foody and saying, okay, how do we get the most out of Liam Foody without paying big money? Um, I don't think he's commanded big money. I think it's too it's too soon to write him off and be like, yeah, he's a bust. We're not going to qualify. We're not going to qualify him. We're going to send him to a different team, whatever. I can see Kekalainen re-signing Liam Foody very, very easily. I'm just not sure what that contract is going to entail. Um, but I would... Hey, I would go to betonline.net, maybe, and I would put some money on it being a show me contract. You know, one year, maybe two. Get your stuff together. Take that next step. Because at a certain point, you have to... It's asset management, you know? Is he worth more to you on the team and developing, or is he worth more as a still pretty promising prospect in a trade? So... It's, uh, that's kind of what it comes down to. I didn't do a Twitter poll for Foodie because, again, I can't, uh, similar to Kevin Stenland, similar to Gregory Hoffman, um, he didn't play a ton this season, so I'm giving him an incomplete. Unfortunately, I think if I had to give him a letter grade, it would have to be a C or a D, just because that's how it goes. But because, yeah, I think he played 30 total games over the AHL and the NHL, so, you know, not even half a season for either. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna give him an incomplete uh, and hope that he comes back, recovers this summer, comes back to training camp. He's gonna be a guy that I'm watching very very closely in training camp to see kind of where he's, how he does, how he's treating this kind of a like, quote unquote adversity in his career because I do think that there is a real gem there. I do think Liam Foody is a potential middle six guy for the Blue Jackets. We just have to figure out how to get him there. So uh, that's kind of a little, just a, a little review on Liam Foody. Uh, obviously not a ton of his actual career stuff to talk about because he didn't play it on the season. But hopefully, you know, we've talked a little bit about some contract stuff and things like that. And we have a better idea of what his next contract could look like and what next season could look like for him. And that's uh, that's all I've got for you today. Tomorrow, we're going to do another player profile. Uh, I don't know who's next on my list. Uh, next on my list is, oh, Brendan Gaunt, who we just talked about. So we'll be talking about Brendan Gaunt tomorrow, which should be, uh, should be pretty exciting. I know people have some pretty strong feelings about him. And uh, that's coming up tomorrow on Locked on Blue Jacket. I've been Jay Foster. You can find me over at Twitter at underscore Jacob Foster, J-A-K-O-B-F-O-R-S-T-E-R. You can find this podcast at L-O underscore Blue Jackets. If you have comments, questions, criticisms, you can email me at LockedOnBlueJackets at gmail.com. And until tomorrow, make sure you stay locked on.